Hello people, in this video we want to look at the different types of meningitis, uh, the cerebrospinal fluid analysis basically. So uh, initially uh, what you can see here they have written is uh, this is how the normal CSF will be. It will be clear and it will have mostly lymphocytes less than 5 per microliter and some proteins 14 to 45, 45 we can remember 45 milligram per deciliter and glucose also 45 milligram per deciliter. This is how uh, the normal CSF will be. However, it will be cloudy only if there is bacteria, okay, that is pyogenic meningitis, okay, which can be caused because of listeria, neisseria, meningitis, okay, streptococcus pneumoniae. Remember that hemophilus influenza also can cause, but now the incidence has reduced because of vaccination. So, uh, pyogenic meningitis is because of all these things, bacteria. Everything else, everything else is aseptic meningitis, guys. Even tuberculosis will cause aseptic meningitis, so just remember that. This is aseptic meningitis, if it is tuberculosis or if it is viral or if it is fungal or parasitic, it is all aseptic meningitis. Uh, so tuberculosis, uh, tuberculous meningitis is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. Viral can be because of Coxsackie virus or uh, herpes simplex virus or polio virus and fungal can be because of cryptococcus and parasitic can be because of nigleria, acanthamoeba, toxoplasma, gondi, main things you remember, okay, these are the ones that will cause uh, each one, okay. Now, uh, where did we tell you it will be cloudy? Cloudy appearance of CSF will be in tuberculosis and the bacterial, okay, pyogenic. Because tuberculosis also is a bacteria, so just remember uh, it can be cloudy in these two, okay. Now, coming to viral, it will be clear, okay, fungal also clear they are saying, so you can remember that. So, um, Guys, now look at what will be more, okay, cell count, what will be more, this is very important, in bacterial pus, right, so what will be more, neutrophils will be more, okay, otherwise uh, what will be more is lymphocytes itself, lymphocytes itself are more in normal CSF, everywhere there will be uh, lymphocytes more, remember that lymphocytes will be more than the normal, okay, lymphocytes itself, but more than the normal, but where will you find neutrophils only and only the pyogenic, because pyogenic pus, so neutrophils will be more where than pyogenic meningitis. Now, what about proteins? Proteins is increased, 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 okay, so protein is mostly increased in all situations you can remember of meningitis, okay. In viral, it can still be normal though. Okay, then coming to glucose, bacteria eats glucose, something like that you can remember. Wherever it was cloudy, remember wherever it was cloudy, there's more pressure in the CSF, right? It will be cloudy means there's more pressure in the CSF, the glucose also will be decreased at that time. So this is something that you can note. Where is the, where is the glucose uh, decreased guys? Glucose is decreased in, yeah, it's thundering here. So, glucose is decreased in uh, pyo acute pyogenic meningitis and tuberculous meningitis. What is reduced? Glucose is less, low, low, low. Glucose, all the bacteria ate up the glucose. That's how uh, we try to remember it. Glucose is eaten up by the bacteria. Okay, then um, even fungus, they have written. Fungus also eats up the bacteria. Sorry, <laughs> eats up the uh, glucose. But um, viral, you see viral, it is normal, okay. Viral, uh, the glucose levels are normal, okay. What else? So, we have only the last column to cover, additional investigation. That and all is easy that you will do, right. So, basically for fungal and parasitic, they are saying direct wet mount of CSF. For uh, viral, they are saying polymerase chain reaction, that is PCR. For bacteria, what will you do? Gram stain, etc. For tuberculous meningitis, you will do AFP stain, acid fast bacilli stain, okay. So, that's it guys. Uh, we just wanted to tell you, uh, that there are so many other types of um, uh, meningitis. Uh, so far in pathology, you may have only looked at bacterial, viral and tuberculous. Now you have to remember fungal and parasitic also. Look at this one. This is the cloudy cerebrospinal fluid. Okay, Cloudy means what can it be? It can be tuberculous or acute pyogenic. The pressure will be more. Remember, CFSF pressure will be more. Glucose will be decreased. Those three are standard here. See, turbulent, purulent, more pressure, cloudy, decreased um, glucose. Okay, so those that those uh, these things are kind of common in uh, acute pyogenic meningitis and tuberculous meningitis. Okay, look at the small table here. This one, basically, what it says is the organisms that can cause meningitis. Look at this. 
if it is um, as, see streptococcus can cause it or uh, can cause uh, meningitis at all ages okay so streptococcus at all ages it can cause but there are some things that cause only see this listeria is below 6 months and um, above 60 years only it will affect listeria will affect what only below 6 uh, months or uh, above 60 years it's very specific i'll attack only the young and old very young very old only it'll attack listeria list listeria okay that will cause pyogenic meningitis then what else you have to remember is uh, hemophilus influenzae now the red, uh, incidence has reduced because of vaccination but otherwise it is 6 months to 6 years something is there about 6 i think these things like 6 a lot 6 months to 6 years what will uh, affect hemophilus influenza okay b so now because of vaccination anyways this has reduced so below 6 months um, and above 60 years listeria listeria will affect only only below 6 months and above 60 years um, about 60 years how do you say greater than 60 years listeria listeria will affect only this age group 6 months to 60 years okay less than 6 months and greater than 60 years listeria okay um, but at less than 6 months lot of other things can be there streptococcus all ages we told you e coli etc you have to remember okay just we are calling out the unique things okay so people many many things can cause meningitis right look at the complete list here so you have bacteria which cause pyogenic meningitis like it could be e coli streptococcus klebsiella listeria right then neisseria meningitis uh, this also causes rashes which is very deadly they said then hemophilus influenzae which is less because of vaccination streptococcus again then coming to um that's it right so these are the things something that you added here was e coli and klebsiella okay e coli klebsiella streptococcus agalectes agalectia is also there here look at this agalectia can you see that here it's written here okay let's look at the entire list of viruses that can cause so viruses you have enterovirus like polio virus here it is look at this polio virus coxsackie virus some echo virus they have written here what is that so these are enterovirus these are the most common then you have herpes simplex virus then you have varicella virus cytomegalovirus epstein barr virus influenza virus para influenza virus mumps mumps virus you should not forget mumps virus right rubella hiv can cause meningitis arboviruses adenoviruses all these what are arboviruses adenoviruses examples adenovirus is a uh, dna virus there is nothing special there the name is same as adenovirus itself when you come to arbovirus right where is arbovirus here see rubella chikungunya virus japanese encephalitis dengue yellow fever kiasunur forest disease virus all these are arbovirus and then you have so many more here rabies virus so many virus rota virus these are all arbovirus but specifically which of those is a problem for meningitis that uh, you will have to check okay so all these can cause these are this is the entire list of viruses that can cause meningitis okay remember all these are aseptic the septic ones are over here these are the bacteria okay but some bacteria like tuberculosis tryponema pallidum that is syphilis causing bacteria leptospira which will be something like this is it leptospira those bacteria will also cause aseptic meningitis okay leptospira tryponema pallidum that is syphilis causing bacteria so many things can cause meningitis okay now you have looked at uh, bacteria and virus there are two more things that you'll have to look at what are those fungi and parasites yes so let us look at the fungi and parasites which can cause uh, meningitis look at fungi first fungi you have the cryptococcus neoformans do you know how this cryptococcus neoformans looks you would have studied it in um, microbiology something like this isn't it like we will show you so this is a fungus and it is coming under yeast category cryptococcus neoformans okay so it will not have any hyphae and all just look at this and um, what you should know about this it is an opportunistic it can cause opportunistic infection it can cause potentially fatal meningitis in hiv infected people 
okay so how does it enter your blood brain barrier how does it cross the blood brain barrier and enter this uh, cns like a trojan horse it is carried inside macrophages so macrophages which are supposed to protect your body will carry the cryptococcus into your brain okay so that is a trojan horse kind of a thing where inside who is sitting the cryptococcus what is the one that is carrying the cryptococcus inside the macrophage okay so the brain will allow it thinking that it is some defense but then it will be a fungus that is coming inside okay then so there are a lot of other things about cryptococcus looks like it is spread by pigeons pigeon droppings have it okay lot of things about uh, cryptococcus we have seen in uh, microbiology now let us move on to the last thing that we want to look at what is the last thing we want to look at parasites that can lead to meningitis okay so where is where is that list of yeah here so parasites that can lead to meningitis here they are telling you nigleria species right acanthamoeba see acanthamoeba you have also read in ophthalmology right uh, contact lens users dirty water so that can lead to acanthamoeba conjunctivitis is it then nigleria species and toxoplasma gondii right uh, this uh, toxoplasma gondii is related more to cat cat droppings look at acanthamoeba this is acanthamoeba so people who are um, did they write here encephalitis it will cause especially in hiv patients okay amoebic encephalitis so that is why you should know about all these okay so uh, what about nigleria fowleri is it fowleri that they have written here nigleria species so nigleria has many species under it they have written uh, nigleria species here so that's it people in this video we have looked at all the types of co uh, causative organisms of meningitis we have looked at uh, bacteria virus other types of bacteria which can cause aseptic meningitis parasites fungi right a lot of things that's it for now guys bye bye